What's going on guys, Luis here with Amerify. In this specific video, we're going to be starting a retirement portfolio, a Roth IRA specifically for those of you guys who are interested in this very topic. For those of you guys who don't know, a Roth IRA is essentially an individual retirement account or IRA in which everything that gets contributed into that portfolio is post tax uh, money essentially and because of that everything that grows inside of that portfolio is essentially growing tax free of course you'll be able to withdraw from your retirement account after 50 uh nine and a half uh i believe is the current uh age limit for for withdrawals uh without any penalties or, or anything like that but it's also important to know that you can also withdraw from your fundamental principle behind your contributions but you can't touch anything of growth into your portfolio so basically if you put in six thousand dollars for example one year's currently of contribution but it grows to ten thousand dollars you can only withdraw that six thousand dollars of initial uh you know investment that you've done into your portfolio the rest of it has to stay inside of your account it's very important to know that of course but this ira is a very a uh, basic portfolio it's something that everybody uh who does finances and stuff like that all know about it it's what i like to call uh the four fund portfolio it is a boglehead portfolio um so normally when people talk about boglehead portfolios they talk about the three fund portfolio i'm a little ocd in the sense that everything i do has to be even so i have it slightly modified or altered to a four fund portfolio which we'll get into it here in this video if you're interested in creating a similar portfolio the exact portfolio or anything like that just basically uh with m1 finance which is the platform that we're going to be doing this with i'm going to be leaving a referral link down below with this exact same portfolio so that you guys can actually see and follow along with uh you know through your own investment journey of course none of this is financial advice this is what i currently use personally and i think it works for my own investment needs in my retirement so that's something that you guys uh can follow along with if you guys want to if you guys go through that link in the description you guys will also get a referral uh compensation if you will currently it's ten dollars but i've seen it go all the way up to about fifty dollars or so so if you guys want free money go ahead and sign up fund your portfolio via my link and you guys will get hooked up in that sense so with that being said let's go and check out this portfolio all right guys so as you guys can see this is a brand new roth ira portfolio that i've started here for you guys on the channel so you guys can follow along and see how easy it is to invest of course as you can see i have a folder for stocks and a folder for bonds uh and that's basically what i'm gonna keep i'm gonna keep this portfolio exactly the way it is throughout the journey so that you guys can see how easy it is to grow and to have an, a retirement portfolio that's relatively safe and everything like that. So I say relatively because you never, you can't predict the market, of course, you know? So invest on your own risk and tolerance levels. So yeah, so I just funded this portfolio today, this morning, which is November 25th or Black Friday, if you will. I put in $500 and it has already grown in value by 60 cents. No dividends paid or anything like that. There is dividends that are gonna be getting paid out on this portfolio. However, none has been paid yet since I just funded the portfolio today. This is all just growth of the actual ETFs themselves. So first things first, let's go ahead and jump into the stocks side and uh, which is probably the most interesting, uh, interesting part. Of course, I have it allocated at 80% stocks, 20% bonds. Um, for those of you guys who would like to know that basically translates to $400 and $100 respectfully. So going into stocks, of course, the first one you see is VTI, currently has $320 at my inv uh, initial investment, has grown 0.12%, and that translates to about 38 uh, cents, of course. Uh, coming over here to uh, oh, oh, to the actual page where it gives a, some key information, of course, this does pay at a 1.55% dividend yield, it's not a massive dividend uh, payout, uh, especially for the price, of course, that ends up being just like a few dollars or something like that annual pay. So that's, you're not gonna get rich off of the dividends. Basically what the, what you want to happen is have that dividend 
essentially is giving you uh, interest on top of that plus dividends on top of that so the whole dividend snowball effect comes to life with these kinds of things right so it's not a massive payout but over time it will add up and it will be amazing one of the good things about vanguard of course is that they have very low uh, expense ratio at 0.03 percent but the arguably the best part about this in my opinion is the beta is only a one 0.02 essentially being one to mark one to the market so if the market is doing great bti is going to do great if the market is doing bad bti is probably going to do bad but it's important to know because it's one to one to the market it is very good to just buy and hold these kinds of investments of course so even if the market is doing insanely bad you're better off continuing to hold the this investment and then buying at a discount so that you can grow your wealth once the market recovers which historically has recovered every single time uh that the market has ever experienced a down year so very important to keep that of course uh this is a great uh investment in my opinion bti is the uh fund that you want if you want to go through the entire stock market uh essentially it has both it has all uh you know uh micro cap uh stocks it has uh small cap medium cap and of course large cap uh stocks all in this portfolio or in this uh excuse me etf making it a great fund to have just so that you can be one-to-one -one with them with the market of course this is a very safe uh investment i say safe because you cannot predict the market of course and you shouldn't sell when the market is down uh just because you're panic selling do some research everything on your own uh to make that determination for yourself in terms of bti holdings as you can see the top 10 holdings is apple fantastic stock one of my personal favorites of course microsoft another great one amazon tesla alphabet also known as google uh, United Health uh, Group, Alphabet. This is the different version. Uh, I, I don't remember which one's which, but one of them has voting rights. I don't know if it's G O O G or G O O G L. One of those two has voting rights, I believe. Uh, but either way, both are great uh, stocks to own. Then you have Berkshire, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, um, Exxon Mobil, of course, and Johnson Johnson. In terms of the top ten, these are all fantastic stocks that you can definitely own. Uh, or at least be exposed to just by having BTI in general. Of course, these are all large cap uh, stocks, of course, but very good and reliable ones nonetheless. I highly recommend this fund, if anything else, just because of the allocation and uh, choices of the holdings in this fund, of course. The next one, as you can see right here, is VXUS. This is essentially the exact same thing as BTI, except... Um, except it's the international version this all has a higher dividend yield than bti and is also very cheap comparatively speaking of course so you can ex get exposed to a lot of uh great stocks on an international level and it, the best part about it is that it, it it diversifies instantly from instead of just being invested just in u.s stocks you can also be invested in international stocks but it's technically safer than VTI because the the uh, beta is at 0.82, which is less than that one to one ratio of uh, you know of the of the broader market, of course. So this is technically a lot safer, but you do have a little bit higher uh, expense ratio. But I mean, this is it's still nothing comparatively speaking. So I would definitely recommend this, of course. Yeah, but not financial advice of course do your own research and everything but this is a great one to have nonetheless in terms of vxus the top the top uh 10 holdings you have uh nestle is a very big one very good one taiwan semiconductor manufacturing this is a company that uh warren buffett and berkshire uh shire hathaway just recently invested in uh they also are the manufacturers who supply the chips to apple products so it's a it's a very good uh company taiwan semiconductor uh manufacturing and of course uh semiconductor chips are something that's all uh, we're going to be near needing for the long run in our future so definitely something to be good invested in and things like that of course you have samsung and of course toyota and various other companies of course you're not going to know every single company because this is a uh if you're at least based in the u.s like i am 
these are companies that are, are in international basis. So it's very hard to know every company or at least a majority of the companies in this fund, but not something. The only thing you need really need to know is that this is a fund that is essentially the equivalent of VTI, but on an international stage. Great one to have nonetheless. And then of course, as, and then of course, as you can see, you have BND and BNDX. Coming over here, you have BND, which is essentially the equivalent of VTI, except on bonds. So you have uh, exposure to every bond out there, essentially. Uh, this has a 2.41% dividend yield and an expense ratio of 0 0.08, which is the highest one that we've seen so far out of the previous funds that we've had, but it's still very, very low to say the least. Of course, this has a very low beta at 0.1, making it the safest, uh, essentially, uh, I guess, beta that we've had here in these funds so far, mainly because Bonds are just generally really regarded as safe, but it's also good to, to have some bonds in your portfolio just to act like as a hedge towards some of your stocks, of course, because traditionally speaking, it's not always the case, but something for the most part, if stocks are seeing very great uh, gains and everything, bonds are gener generally going to take a hit. And vice versa, of course, if stocks are taking a hit, bonds are generally going to be uh, performing a little bit better than usual in today's market you really never know because it could go both of them can be doing good both of them can be doing bad etc 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 right so this is still a good idea to have in your portfolio to say the least again not financial advice but uh some something i would consider if i was in your position now in terms of bonds if you're gonna have one fund to have uh in in bonds, I would probably go with BND because it's a great uh, one to have nonetheless. Uh, and the next one that we're gonna talk about is not really necessary. I've heard it quoted as saying uh, diversifying just for the sake of diversifying, but diversification isn't bad in my opinion. So I, and plus, I'm, like I said before, I'm a little OCD when it comes to that kind of stuff. So I'd like to have the next fund. But if you just wanted one fund uh, to have for your bonds, you can't go wrong with BND. It's a great uh, bond in a, you know, uh, ETF to have. So if that's something you're looking for, if you just want to have one fund, I would put it in here. But of course, the last one is BNDX, as you can see right here, which is essentially the exact same thing as BND, except on an international level. This is why they say diversifying for the sake of diversifying, but I just want a little bit of exposure for uh, some overseas things. If their markets are doing good or their interest rates are going up, chances are BNDX is going to be profiting for you, right? So I don't mind this little bit of uh, diversification. A lot of people think it's unnecessary. Uh, if you want a three fund portfolio, I would just get rid of this and everything you have allocated to this, I would put it into BND instead of BNDX. So consolidating everything into BND. But again, I like to diversify a little bit more than your average person. So with that, I do like BNDX personally. This has a 3.53% uh, dividend yield currently at a $48 uh, share price, making it a pretty good and healthy uh, dividend yield, for the, especially for the price of the stock. Of course, the expense ratio is at a 0 0.07, still again, making it pretty safe uh, in terms of uh, how much you're spending or you're, you're, you're buying into this fund essentially in terms of expenditures. And again, the beta again is at 0.1, making it a very safe investment in terms of the broad market itself. You can't go wrong with either uh, of those or, uh, but yeah. So as you can see, I like to do the, I like to go 80, 20 on everything. So 80% stocks in general, 20% bonds in general. If you go into stocks, you have 80% into VTI, 20% uh, into VXUS. And then if you go back and go into bonds, it's the same story here. You have 80% in BND and 20% in BNDX. In terms of holding, as of $500, your initial investment, it looks like this. You have $320 into VTI, $80 into VXUS, 80 into BND, and 20 into BNDX which is essentially what 
you have in terms of allocation of course this is gonna change and fluctuate as the market fluctuates of course so uh don't uh be dead set on that of course because it's gonna fluctuate of course and in terms of funding history um all i have is that initial investment it is important that you can only uh put in six thousand dollars on an annual basis currently however in 2020 uh three next year in other words this is going to be increased we'll talk about it in a later video but um this will be increased for next year so we're only going to have two uh deposits of 500 dollars. so for 2022 is only going to be a thousand dollars initially uh before we end up going to 2023 and start doing an elevated uh investment uh, instead of 500 it's gonna be a little bit higher than that I'll do the math on that so it can be so I can let you guys know exactly how much that's going to be but for now we're only gonna do the actual maximum contribution limit for each individual year of course sometime in the later future we are going to come back to 2022 and max out this uh, number just so that we can say that we maxed out 2022 and 2023 24 etc etc but the only thing I want to know from you guys um is this if you guys want to be updated on this portfolio on a monthly basis since i'm going to be doing monthly contributions do you guys want to see uh, quarterly contribution updates and performance updates of this portfolio or do you guys want to see annual performance updates of this portfolio let me know down in the comment section if you guys want to if you guys like how this um portfolio is structured and everything like that i'm actually going to leave a link to this portfolio down in the description down below if you guys want to invest in this specific portfolio for yourself in whatever capacity that is then you guys would also be taking advantage of my referral link which will automatically give you guys eligibility to uh getting some monetary compensation to allow you to invest just that much more into your portfolio at the current time of making this video that monetary compensation is ten dollars but again as i said before i've seen that number go all the way up to uh 50 something dollars ish so it can fluctuate if you guys want to take advantage of that definitely click on that link it helps you out it helps me out and we all leave a little happy so with that being said definitely do me a huge favor drop a like on this video also subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed because it really does help this channel grows so with that being said catch you guys in the next one deuces